If you take your UPSC prelims examination as part of your general studies first part, you have a good number of questions uh, coming from both world and India map. And if you look at the long term average of the last 10 years, you get at least four questions from world map. I have some samples for you. For example, take this question from 2025. It talks about consider the following countries. How many of the countries have more than four different time zones? Look at this question. Consider the following countries where they show you South American regions and they ask you Andes mountains passes through how many of the above countries which are mentioned. So one is on physiography, one is on time zones. Now take a look at this question. Consider the following water bodies through how many of them does the equator pass. All these questions are just from 2025. Now to substantiate the point made. Let's look at this 2024 question. The longest border which is present between any two countries in the world is between which sets of countries? The answer is of course Canada and United States. And look at this format which is more linked with current affairs. They have given the name of the country and along with the name of the country they've exactly specified what is the reason for being it in use. For example, worst economic crisis, war between army and paramilitary forces and his relationship with NATO. Not just this. For further substantiation, look at uh, this previous question from 2023. Same format, region which is mentioned in news and the reason for being in news. Okay. And uh, same format right here, area of conflict in news and then finally country where it is located. So if you are regularly following newspapers and if you're following up your map, that is the most constructive way of learning your mapping for your final examination. Because we have uh, seen a lot of students struggle when it comes to world mapping because they try to learn all the topics uh, convincingly, comprehensively at the end, which is not the right method. Mapping is better studied as part of so regular current affairs preparation. And whenever a region appears in news, if you can confidently make sure that you are aware of that particular region, then your final preparation just before your prelims examination in the months of April and May becomes much easier. And as a part of that discussion, today we're going to look at East Asia. Now, why East Asia? Because East Asia is in use for multiple reasons. If you take the present relationship between the countries of China and Japan, the relationship is pretty fraught. Recently, the Japanese Prime Minister made a statement that Japan will be very particular about defending the island of Taiwan if there are any efforts by China to move aggressively towards Taiwan. And that had escalated into geopolitical tensions between the countries of Japan and China. Remember this. Whenever the news article comes, what you prepare for your mapping is not that news article alone, but what is around the region. So now let's look at some major islands in parts of East Asia and water bodies, which will be helpful for our prelims examination. So the first thing is in this small localized region between the archipelago of Japan and Korean Peninsula, you have this water body called as the Sea of Japan right here. So keep that in mind, the first water body of discussion is Sea of Japan located between the Japanese archipelago, Korean Peninsula and Vladivostok. Vladivostok was in use uh, during the visit of the Russian President Vladimir Putin to India where they had mentioned about the corridor between Chennai and Vladivostok. And south of Sea of Japan, you have the second water body between the Korean Peninsula and the Shandong region that is Yellow Sea. South of Yellow Sea, you have the water body East China Sea. Now, whenever you prepare for your mapping, you're too focused on Southeast Asia and South China Sea. But please remember, this is the order as you move from North to South, starting from Sea of Japan in the North, between the Korean Peninsula, North, you know, Southeastern Russia and Japanese archipelago. Then you have the Yellow Sea, which is sandwiched between the Korean Peninsula and northeastern part of China and finally your East China Sea which is present in southern part of Japan. So Sea of Japan, Yellow Sea and after Yellow Sea we not have South China Sea we have East China Sea. 
That's the first thing you have to remember. Now for islands. Now, of course, we have familiar, I think most of you are familiar with different types of islands which are present in Japan. But before that, we have to go north. This island which you see right here is one of the largest islands of Russia in the southeastern region. It is Sakhalin Island. Sakhalin Island is important for Russia because of the presence of oil and natural gas as resources close to this island. And the second island of discussion, which they may ask you, because it is a region which is disputed between the country of Japan and Russia, is your Kuril Islands, which are mentioned right here. These Kuril Islands are presently, you know, administered by the Russians today. But this transfer happened in the year 1945, especially before one week of the signing of the, you know, armistice where Japan uh, uh, completely uh, surrendered during the Second World War. So within a span of one week between the dropping of weapons uh, after Hiroshima and Nagasaki and the surrender of Japan on August 15, the Russian forces occupied the Kuril Islands. Uh, Japan feels this is an, uh, you know, what do you say, unethical way of occupation and hence they have been asking for return of these Kuril Islands uh, back to Japan. So keep that in mind. In parts of southeastern Russia, we have number one, Sakhalin Islands and the second archipelago is your Kuril Islands. And please note, south of this, we have the islands of Japan itself. And after the southern part of Japan, one important island which was recently in news is the Ryukyu Island Group. Now, why the Ryukyu Island Group? Because in Ryukyu Island Group, we have a very important island called as Okinawa. And as you can clearly see from the map, Okinawa is closer to the important cities which are present in the eastern coast of China, including Shanghai. Shanghai based on the World Trade Organization report, is the busiest port in the world in terms of total amount of tonnage handled in the year 2024. So Okinawa was in use and after Okinawa, we have the important territory of Taiwan. The entire contention between Japan and China was with reference to this particular island. And now, if you look at the order of arrangement, starting from north to south, we have the Russian islands of Sakhalin and Kuril, which is present with them. After that, you have the Japanese archipelago. As part of Japanese archipelago, the southernmost group of islands is Ryukyu and the major island is Okinawa. And south of Okinawa, you have the island of Taiwan. And lastly, it's an important strait here. And the name simply is Taiwan Strait. Taiwan Strait separating the island of Taiwan from mainland China. And why was this in news again? Because it is through the Taiwan Strait that most of the trade for the Japanese archipelago happens. So, goods which are transported usually reach Japan through the Taiwan Strait and that is what makes it significant. And second important thing to note, in this region you have two major island disputes and island disputes are potential questions for your prelims examination. So, if you take the first island group, this island group is known by uh, different names in different sets of countries called Senkaku or Dayau Islands, which are the most uh, prominent ways in which is reported in news. And you will see that that particular island is actually present right here at the tri-junction of the countries of, uh, you know, China, Taiwan. And we just mentioned about Ryukyu Islands right there. So that is where you have your Senkaku Islands or Dayau Islands, which is a disputed territory between these three countries, especially between Japan and I won. And now for the second group of disputed islands is right here. So I'm going to zoom in further. That's your Leon Court Rocks. Now, as you can observe from the map here, Leon Court Rocks are disputed between the countries of uh, South Korea and Japan. So Leon Court Rocks and your, you know, DIO Islands or Senkaku Islands are important points of disputes in the East Asian region, which you should keep it in mind. And lastly, remember this, I just have a simple question regarding this particular discussion we had. And before I go to that question, let me remind you, in Japan, there are four major islands. The four major islands include uh, Hokkaido, uh, Honshu, Shikoku, and then finally Kyoso. Shikoku and finally Kyojo.
In these four islands which you see right here, you can observe that Hunzu has the largest amount of surface area and Hunchus where you have the largest amount of economic trade activities and population also. And this is the most important island for Japan. Hokkaido has pretty severe conditions as it moves closer and closer to the polar region in the northeast. Now, for the question here, this question is structured based on the UPSC format of arrangement. So the question simply says, arrange the following islands from north to south. And uh, here we go, we have the islands of Okinawa, Taiwan, Sakhalin and then Honshu. You can solve the question and post the answer in the video comment section. And please remember, I will meet you with a next discussion on world mapping. Bye for now.